It's been 18 years since one of my all-time favorite pedal companies called it quits. And today I'm gonna to walk you through some of the history and I'm gonna play every single pedal they made so that at the end of this episode, you can help me keep the amazing legend of love tone alive. In 1995, two guys from England decide to start a pedal company. They ceased production of their pedals in 2001. So in six short years, they had a thing. And I think that thing changed the pedal industry for good. I need you to place yourself back in 1995 for a second. And as you watch me play these pedals in a moment, I need you to think about what a pedal was and what they had been. What you're gonna see is something radically different. Let's talk first about how you even bought a pedal. Well, you went to a store and bought a pedal or you ordered it through the mail. That's a radical change from today where we just get on Google, check things out, and it's at our doorstep next day or two days later. That just wasn't an option then, which means even when these are being made, they were incredibly rare and in my opinion, the truest form of boutique. Now let's talk about them sonically and visually. There was nothing like this. Basically, Love Tone took everything normal, sane, and comfortable and threw it out the window and forever changed the game. You can see traces of Love Tone all through the pedals of the modern age that we live in now. You can see people allowed to do things out of the box. People don't feel weird about making a crazy pedal anymore because Love Tone kind of kicked that door down. It's almost like the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. Musicians saw them and realized, hey, we can do that too. Well, Love Tone did that for guys like me and all of my friends who make pedals. So without further ado, let's look at them. I'm gonna show you the box as you don't see a lot of those floating around. And if you're a collector, it's really cool. Um, also, I'll open it up so you can see how they packaged it. But basically you got a big cardboard mailer like this. You got the address, phone number and all that stuff. And then on the back side, they use the same stamp and they would simply check what model it was. So this is a wobulator. I know someone's gonna call that phone number. It doesn't work, trust me. So you open it up and um, you got this kind of arrangement. So the pedal's like down in the cardboard. Yeah, there's your pedal. Another thing are these cool postcards. Um, so this black pedal board here, there are a few people that actually have this board. I believe John Mayer told me he has the whole display unit. Um, so that's probably pretty rare. On the back side, it says the Love Tone pedal board, a legend in its own lunchtime. And then it says, uh, which is really great, has a little sticker on it, only while stocks last. Last thing to show you are a few of the manuals because in today, 2018, these just feel absurd, um, but they're basically just stapled sheets of paper. I'll show you a couple of my favorite. I mean, look at the meatball because these pedals are so ridiculously like tweakable. I can't imagine writing these manuals out. I write my manuals on a card like this big. You know, I don't need any space, but look at this warning. You get these kind of start guides here. Okay, I have a lot to go through here. I'm just gonna go for it and it's all in no particular order. Uh, and I'm gonna start with the doppelganger. So the doppelganger is a phaser vibrato that has two LFOs, meaning you can do some pretty crazy stuff because you can put those against each other. You have uh, expression pedal inputs, you have a host of knobs, you have waveform, you switch between phaser vibrato here, turn it on and off, and then you can choose between one or the two LFOs to get weird. Um, here's a loop. Next. 
Next up, I'll do the big cheese. This is hands down the most known, and you may have actually seen this one. Uh, it's on a lot of famous records. A lot of players use it, everyone from Radiohead to Jeff Tweedy of Wilco, Pavement, U2. Uh, it's a fuzz pedal. It's fairly simple operation, but the sounds are really, really awesome and versatile. You have a Curds knob, Hog, and B knob. You can choose your type of cheese little click switch, and then you have a way control. Um, it's pretty amazing, maybe my favorite just because it's so accessible and usable. I actually have this as well. This is a blackout version of it that what I heard, I talked to Dan and I believe he said there were two of these ever made for a dealer in England. Got a hold of this guy, um, doesn't get much more rare than that, but here they are. Next one is the meatball. This is also really well known. Not as well known, but uh, if you're a bass player, this probably pops up in your search for fun effects. Um, and actually, I think Kurt Hammett used this on a random intro of a Metallica song. It's really versatile. But what we have here is an envelope trigger, envelope follower filter, so kind of an Ottawa thing, but it does so much more. It does some really fantastic sounds. Uh, there's too many controls to even go over, but I'll play it for you. But I mean, it's extensive and it's nuts what all of this pulls off. You've got effects loops as well where you can put other effects into it so they're triggered into the envelope, expression pedals, and so on. And now the Wobulator. The Wobulator is a dual LFO tremolo stereo pan effect. And that's a mouthful, but it really just does so many great things in the trim category. And because you can choose so many different waveforms, shapes, depths, put the LFOs against each other, it does so much more sonically than when you just think of a tremolo. You can really create some amazing effects with this. Um, as usual, you've got uh, all kinds of inputs and outputs. You've got click switches, you can enable the left and right in your pan, and there's even LFO triggers and stuff. I mean, it's pretty, pretty amazing. I also came across a custom color of it. I don't really know the story, but uh, this is it, so. Take a look. Next up is the brown source. This is the most normal, kind of simplified pedal you'll ever see from Love Tone. It's an overdrive pedal, and it has drive, high and low, like a tone control, and then a tone click switch, and a volume control. So I think brown source is playing on the term brown sound, as in Marshall Overdrive, and it does that really well, but in my opinion, this is just a really unique, open, airy, uncompressed overdrive that I think is fairly unique from a circuit design standpoint and just ease of use. So you might find this. These are actually pretty affordable when you find them popping up. So this might be a good gateway into maybe owning a love tone. <laughs> The
This next one is one of the craziest ones, and uh, it's one that's really hard to find, and a lot of people search high and low for it because of all that it does. It's called the Ring Stinger, and basically this is a ring modulator, simple analog synthesizer, and an octave fuzz. I know that sounds crazy, but that's just what it is. You have VCO inputs, um, you have LFO depth pedal, you can do carrier in, VCO out, so you can chain this into things. You have different LFO selections here. You can um, turn on the octave or ring, different waveforms. It's just kind of nuts, and they did put a blend in there. Um, plus, it's pink. You know, I'm a fan of pink, so this is maybe the best looking one. You be the judge. Next is the flange with no name. Um, sometimes it's just called question mark. You know, kind of like Prince was a symbol. I don't know, something like that. But it's a stereo flanger, but more than that, it's a stereo modulation device. And I think that's even how they marketed it because it does a crazy amount of chorus vibrato flange type sounds. It's also a simple synthesizer. You can set it up to do rhythmic percussive synth things as well and just kind of nutso sounds. You can just make sounds with this that I've never heard any other pedal do. You got a ton of settings. You got a ton of switches as usual. Um, you do have an effects loop. You have a trigger for the gate. You have a CV in for a pedal. Um, yeah, mono or stereo. Pretty great pedal. Last but not least is the first one I ever owned. It is the cheese source. The cheese source is simply this. It's the big cheese and the brown source. Buzz and overdrive, two in one. And um, I don't really need to explain anything else. That's what it is. open. Most pedals have a back plate. These have a hinge. Look at that. I think it's cool. I mean, if nothing else, I'm just showing myself this for when I watch this later. Uh, maybe someone thinks it's cool. I don't know. Today's record time is brought to you by Zeus Busting Visions. I had never heard of this record or this band until one day, probably four, five, six years ago, I walked into the shop and this was blaring. From the moment I heard it, it blew my mind because it felt like Paul McCartney had this love child with Steely Dan and Queen and Jimi Hendrix. It was really, really amazing at first listen. 
Um, and then I really started noticing the recording techniques, the way the drums are tracked and the vocals, the guitars, the way it's mixed and mastered. It's just a really, really amazing album because it throws back to classic rock without feeling weird or like feeling like it's copying something. It does it in a really original way. So I really encourage you to go check this out, Zeus Busting Visions. And in the comments, I would like for you to leave me your favorite album or band that throws back to classics without being obnoxious. Something that still feels fresh or relevant, but they're obviously using those tones and techniques from the days gone by. So put that in the comments and go check this record out. That's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it half as much as I have because it's been a blast. I'm really glad that there is now a place on the internet where we can see every pedal, hear it, and hear some of the story. I hope you're able to share it with your friends. I'll share it later on and we'll help this legend of love tone kind of live on. I think these pedals are super important to the industry and to guitar and what they kind of allowed to happen after them. So that's pretty cool to me, pretty special. Uh, this collection took me about 10 years to acquire, kind of slowly meeting a person here or seeing something there. And I just want to give a big shout out to two people who helped me find a couple of these units that are very weird. Your names are L and H, you know who you are. So big thanks to you. In the comment section below, I would would love for each and every one of you to write in what your favorite pedal was that I played today. What's your favorite pedal by this company? Tell me why, tell me all about it. Talk to me about it. That'd be really cool. So hit like if you like this episode, subscribe to the channel, and there's a bell icon where you click that and you get notifications of future episodes. Other than that, I think the only thing you could do past this point is really just watch this video like 60 to 100 times, memorize it, and just tell the episode to your friends. I think that's a really good avenue to get the point across. Um, yeah, bye-bye, have a good day.